these boys in the meantime can grow them on sawdust. Beautiful. See the spores coming off? Usually you can when the sun's hitting them like that. Yeah, you can a little bit. So this tree is an all-star. This tree's like loaded every year. So I'm gonna try and keep these separate and clone them. But oh yeah, you can see the looks like smoke coming off it. Right there. That's all the spores. Millions of spores. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. We spent all day in the mountains yesterday hunting wild reishi mushrooms and when actually we found a ton of them. I think we ended up with like over 150 pounds. But I actually saved some pieces from two mature mushrooms that I thought would be interesting ones to clone and that's what I'm going to do right now. So the mushroom we're picking is it's wild reishi mushroom. but It's Ganoderma lucidum variety suge. Typically this time of year it's growing on hemlock. I do find it on red maple and actually this year we found quite a bit on red maple, way more than usual, which I thought was kind of interesting. So this one right here, you know, this is just part of the conch. It was a big, you know, clam shaped conch and I just saved the, the center of two. So this one was growing on red maple. So I labeled that one hardwood. I figured that'd be an interesting one to clone since hemlock is the common host tree but uh, like I said this year red maple was popular too so we'll grab one of those and this one was off a of hemlock but it's not just any hemlock this tree is like number one in the reishi hall of fame in terms of trees for me I've picked this tree for probably I want to say at least 12 years maybe 15 years and it's just a big standing dead mature hemlock and uh, this tree is just a giver every year you know some trees will take a year off or they won't produce a lot uh, maybe just a couple little conks and this tree is just loaded every year with big beautiful reishi mushrooms so i picked one of the larger ones off of that tree this year and we're gonna clone this as well and i figured it'd be interesting to you know, i'm gonna start it on auger clean it up hopefully get it to some grain liquid culture whatever and then we'll try them on sawdust and uh, see how they do see if there's any real difference between the two and uh yeah so i what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rip these open get some tissue samples move them to auger and hopefully we'll get some you know fairly clean plates so we got the flow hood running uh, i'm gonna do four plates total two of each individual and uh, i'm just gonna do two at a time so we're starting out with two Everything's been sprayed down with 70% uh, isopropyl.
It was a little tough, but we got our tissue samples. Uh, the inside of those reishi mushrooms is like really leathery. Uh, the scalpel was brand new and it was still kind of tough to get a nice clean, uh, clean cut into it, but we were able to get some tissue samples. Hopefully they're relatively clean. I'm just gonna incubate them. And actually this is one of my cordyceps grow containers that doubles as a uh, plate incubation tub. So just uh, incubate them for a week or so and then we'll check them out again, see how they look. It's been about three weeks since I dropped the tissue on our reishi plates and you can see that uh, two turned out pretty good and the other two not so much. Uh, really no growth on two of them. Not sure if maybe the scalpel was a little too hot or the tissue dried out, not totally sure there. But I do have one good plate from uh, each strain that I was looking to get. So this one here is from the red maple. Really nice growth there. And this one over here I nicknamed Beast. That's from our number one tree in the Reishi Tree Hall of Fame. The dead hemlock there. That one's looking good too. Just want to make sure that they're nice and clean. So I'll drop a few wedges on some other plates. And uh, hopefully from there I'll be able to go to some liquid culture or some grain spawn. But I gotta say the, the beast culture here took off much more quickly than the red maple. But it looks like actually the red maple's caught up now. So it's a slow starter, but now it's cranking. So I got I actually got the flow hood running right now. Got some plates ready. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some wedges out of here and get a second generation going. So hopefully if everything goes according to plan, I'll be able to try growing these out on some pasteurized fuel pellets this fall and winter. As I mentioned before, I believe these are the same species. Uh, Ganoderma lucidum, variety suge, I would say. But we got them growing on two pretty drastically different substrates here. Uh, red maple and hemlock. So a conifer versus a hardwood is pretty big in, in terms of the uh, mycology world. So it'll be interesting. Uh, I have some hardwood fuel pellets. I have some softwood fuel pellets so we can try them out on different substrates as well. So we'll see hopefully cool things to come with this, but uh, that's it for now. I'm going to get working in front of the flow hood and I'll catch you next video.